literally the doorbell just rang. I was just finishing up my video about the Cases TB501, my first Thunderbolt 5, although it's actually a USB 4 version 2 device, 80 gigabit per second SSD uh, enclosure. And I'm really excited because this is my first Thunderbolt dock slash hub device. And I think that actually is the true promise of Thunderbolt 5. I can't wait to get this thing open and just check it out. So let's get this thing open. This is actually from OWC. I've reviewed many of their devices in the past. I have been using their devices for 15, 20 years now, even before Thunderbolt. And this is their new Thunderbolt hub. Well, let's see what's in the box here. And there it is. I do have my previous Thunderbolt 4 hub from OWC with me as well. And I thought I would just have it here so we can compare them in size. You can see that the new one is substantially larger. And I don't know if that's a trend that, you know, Thunderbolt 5 circuitry is just going to require more space and more chip design or if there's another reason it's larger. It's still pretty compact compared to my other docks over here. In fact, I could kind of lay that and you can see compared to all of these other, but it is truly just a hub. So there's only, there's only five uh, ports on this total. Let's see what else is in the box real quick. We have a Thunderbolt 5 cable, which makes sense. It's not labeled OWC, usually it is. Uh, usually OWC cables are Intel certified, I assume they did that. But since it doesn't have a brand, you can't be sure. The power supply itself uh, uses the Mickey Mouse plug, which I, I think maybe these smaller power supplies use this because it takes less space. So the power supply can be thinner. Because even though it's quote a standard one, I probably have only had maybe five devices in the last 15 years that have used this quote standard Mickey Mouse plug. But it is pretty skinny, the power supply. And as you can see, it's a 180 watt power supply. The upstream port to the computer supplies 140 watts of power, which is what the MacBook Pro uh, charger supplies. Thunderbolt 5 and USB 4 version 2 both specify up to 240 volts, uh, watts I mean, but there's really not a real need for that. Uh, 140 watts will pretty much charge any laptop without too much trouble and you still have enough power left over because the three downstream ports have to have at least 15 watts of power available to those. Let's take a look at the ports really quick. So I noticed on the front, they have put a downstream port with the old one. The front was the port that connected to your computer, as you can see. And I always thought that was really weird. And I think they must have learned that because this is really nice versus kind of a pain. Uh, I often have, I want to plug like an SSD or a USB device into this front, and I don't want to have to reach around to the back to do it. And of course, the on the back, you've got the the uh, down upstream port to your computer, and that makes sense because normally that's a cable you don't have to plug in and out of the dock. You're going to take the other end and plug it in and out of your computer. And of course, you have the two other downstream Thunderbolt 5 ports. It also has a USB 3.2 port. And I found on this one, this port was actually pretty effective. I could plug a dock into this USB dock, 3.2 dock, and get good throughput uh, without a lot of problem. Something I actually can't do with my Avanki, my USB 3.2 dock in my Avanki. Uh, I lose my audio once in a while and a few other quirky things. Let me mention a couple of other things about the dock. First of all, it does have a power button. And I noted on the Thunderbolt 5 dock from Kensington, they had a power button. And I said it was kind of unusual, and I've never seen OWC put a power button on any of their docks as well. Now, this might be something that's just unique, and every Thunderbolt 5 dock will have that, and I'll have to research that and hub as well. And I don't know if the purpose is you plug your devices in and then power it up. Uh, usually, it's just plug and play. One other thing is the indicator lights. The previous OWC Thunderbolt 4 hub 
you know, the whole logo lit up at the top. And I think it was blue if it was connected and white if it wasn't or vice versa. Instead, this one has two small LEDs on the bottom of the device. One appears to be to indicate whether it's powered or up or not based on the switch. And the other, I think, is a blue light that comes on once the device has a Thunderbolt connection to the host. Because of their placement on the bottom, you can't tell that they're on at all. I think if, even if, if the room is really dark, you could probably see a little tiny glow. But in this case right now, I can they're back here, and I have no idea. i got to remember I don't have my lavalier on. I can't turn my head. I have no idea that they're on or not. Probably not a big deal because obviously you know when they're on or not. And I don't know that those LED status lights are important. But I thought it was kind of quirky. Uh, might have been easier to do. I know the, the logo lighting up is really cool. And, you know, as I said, not a big deal. The one other thing I might mention is you'll notice that there's a little hole above all of the Thunderbolt ports on OWC docks. And I've had a few people question what those are for. And it looks like a little reset hole. Those are for a little device you can buy from OWC. There's a little uh, device that, that's the hole that the screw goes in, which actually secures your Thunderbolt cables to the dock or the other devices that OWC makes. And that's really unique to them. I've never tried those before. I don't know that there's a lot of reason for me to use them. Uh, I might buy a few just to see. They might be helpful for people, which maybe they're having to move things around and it's a possibility that the cable will get pulled away or something. Anyway, that's what those little holes are for. So that's a general overview of the device, what you get with it. Uh, it looks like a really well-made device as is typical with OWC. First thing I'll mention is I can't really test the ability to support monitors. I have to take their word for it. I know that some people claim the Cal Digit, if you put it to the limit with its monitors, it overheated. Uh, I never really saw that, but I don't put it to the limit. I have two 4K monitors, one running at 144 hertz, the other at 60, and I have a 2K monitor running at 60. And so the best I can do is I can hook up three displays, and I did that, and everything worked absolutely perfectly. I had no issues. I don't think I'll keep that third display, but running 200, 240, uh, two 4K monitors, and the 2K monitor for uh, two or three hours, uh, I didn't notice it's getting over hot, overly hot, and it worked just great. So let's just see if we have a problem with the downstream speed for my Thunderbolt 5 devices. This is the Acasis 501. I did a review, review about this. And here, first I'm going to do is run this directly to my Mac so I can get a baseline. As you can see, I'm getting right around 59 to 6,000 megabytes a second, pretty consistent. Now I did erase this drive, it's the Western Digital SN850X, very fast drive, has a really, really large SLC catch, at least 250 gigabytes. So this particular test would be able to run for probably maybe 100 cycles before it would slow down because the cache got full. So it should be a good a device to use, this Western Digital. So now let's run the same device through the Thunderbolt 5 hub from OWC and as you can see, my write speeds drop to about 4,400. My read speeds stay about the same. And this is actually typical of most docs because the uh, read speeds aren't being interfered with by a lot of bandwidth from your displays. The display's bandwidth is going the other direction. So I've lost about 15% of my speed by running this through the dock. And as with Thunderbolt 4 docks and hubs, this is probably going to be fairly typical. You're going to lose some speed. So now when we add one... 4K display running at 60 hertz to the dock, we see we lose about another 100 megabytes a second. So pretty negligible. Running a single display doesn't seem to really hurt our bandwidth to write. Again, you'll notice that the, write, the read speed stays at that consistent 5800 no matter what we lose on the write speed. So if I add a second 4K display, you'll see that it does affect the bandwidth. I lose another 10%. So I've lost about 30 almost pretty much one third of my speed. The good news is if you're using a Thunderbolt 5 or USB 4 version 2 device, it's still really fast, much faster than we ever got out of Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4 uh, devices version 1. So even though we've lost a lot of speed, it's something that is still probably a good thing. There may be just no way to pass the full bandwidth through to these docks. And like I said, it could be if the speed is really, really something you need, you're going to have to leave an available port directly to your Mac that you can hook these devices to where you won't lose any bandwidth. 
And that's kind of what I've done from now on. If I need that speed because I'm transferring two or 300 gigabytes of data, I'm going to hook it directly to an available port on the Mac. One good part about my dock is because I use the dock, I always have a port free on my Mac for other things if I need to. Okay, so now the problem that I found with a Kensington is so I decided to try the same thing. I've got my OWC 1M2, very, very high quality uh, USB 4 device. I get 3400 read and write speed connected directly to my Mac. I get 2800 read and write speed connected through a Thunderbolt 4 dock. I tested the OWC dock, the CalDigit Thunder 4 dock, and the Avanki Thunderbolt 4 dock. 2800 read and write. And now when I plug it into this Thunderbolt 5 hub, you'll see that my write speeds drop all the way down to 1200 megabytes per second. Notice the read speeds are faster than through the other ones. I get my full 3400 read speed, which through the other docks, I could only get 2800. I got the exact same results through the Satechi. Now, both of these devices are lit, seen as a USB 4 device. The Acasis is seen as a Thunderbolt 3 device. And interestingly enough, I get about 1,700 megabytes a second connected to this Thunderbolt 5 dock versus about 2,800 connected to a Thunderbolt 4 dock. So this one is slower than the other two through a Thunderbolt 4 dock, but it's actually faster to a Thunderbolt 5 dock. But we're still a long way from the speeds of 3,000 to 3,400 that we should be seeing if we connect directly to the Mac. Just real quickly, I did decide to attach my two displays. Those tests were with no displays and it doesn't affect the speed to these devices. They're going slow enough now that there's really not an issue and you'll still get the 1200 or 1700 write that they're capable of and the 3400 read that they're capable of. Now, in a lot of circumstances, the read speed is far more important. It just depends on your workflow. And so, you know, I'll leave that there. I do know that over time, probably most people will be using USB 4 version 2 devices or Thunderbolt 5 devices. The difference between the two is really, the lines have blurred dramatically. They're basically almost all, almost identical in many respects. But until then, you might be aware that you probably don't want to hook your external high-speed storage devices to your Thunderbolt 5 dock unless they resolve this problem or you just don't need that write speed um, I think a lot of people are using docs and aren't aware of how much write speed they've actually lost. And they don't really notice it because whatever their workflow is, it just doesn't show up. Unless you're do, doing a lot of large file transfers or some video work, uh, it really probably isn't showing up in your workflow. So just for the heck of it, I did try daisy chaining a Thunderbolt 4 hub, this one from OWC, and a Thunderbolt 4 dock, the TS4 from CalDigit. And when I did that, I could actually drive both of my displays, both 4K, one 144 hertz, the other 60 hertz, no problem. And I could even get fairly decent read speeds from my Acasis 80 gigabit per second device. As you can see, I'm getting about 2,800 read. Now, this is a lot slower than the 5,800 read that I can get through the Thunderbolt 5 dock, but it's still pretty quick. I can only get about, what is it, about 7, 800 write. So really, really slow. Well, enough for me. As usual, my videos go longer than necessary. That's why I put a lot of timestamps. I'm assuming a lot of people will skip through the box opening and other things. I just enjoy doing those parts, so hopefully it doesn't really hurt my, you know, like I said, I don't mind people skipping ahead to get to the part they want. Some people, you know, just I'm kind of a YouTube addict myself. I like to watch a lot of these videos, and I actually enjoy box openings a lot of the time. Anyway, bottom line, I think this is a really well-made device, as is typical of OWC. I do think there's an issue with Thunderbolt 5 and its speed connection to legacy devices. Whether that'll be addressed or not, or whether it is even addressable or not, I don't know. I hope you found the video interesting. I uh, enjoy testing these things. If you decide you want to buy one of these devices, including the Kensington, I will go ahead and put a link below because it probably is a good device. Twice as much money, but you get an Ethernet port, you get an audio port, you get, I think, three USB ports. And even though that probably isn't going to be as good as the ones probably on the way from CalDigit and OWC, which personally I would wait for, maybe that's what you need right now because it looks like its functionality as far as the USB or the Thunderbolt 5 ports is identical to the OWC. And the issue that I pointed out there probably is not their fault, but is the problem we've got with probably all these docks coming out the gate. Uh, I wish they could fix it. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see where that goes. Anyway, hey, if you have any questions or comments, uh, always welcome. Read those below. Until next time, see ya.